This video has been sponsored by Mizen. Chicken wings have to be one of the best snack foods ever created, whether you're hanging out with friends, watching a game, wallowing in your own sadness at a chain restaurant, just scarfing them down. I've been told that some people do that. But there's gotta be millions of different kinds of chicken wing recipes out there, whether you're talking sauces, or cooking methods, or the shapes of the wings, like, there's probably too many recipes out there to count. But today, we have the very tall task of trying to find the best chicken wing recipe here on YouTube. And the contenders are Gordon Ramsay and his spicy British chicken wings, the Halal Chef's deep fried buffalo wings, Food Wishes, Honey Sriracha Wings, and then to round everything off, we've got Rie's Japanese Tabasaki Chicken Wings. Pause the video right now and leave a comment with which recipe you think is gonna come out on top today, and let's get right into this one. The only one of these I have any experience with are Rie's Tebasaki Wings. If you've been around for a couple of years, you might remember them. As far as the other ones, I'm going in completely blind, but before I can familiarize myself with any of them, I gotta give a shout out to my friends over at Mizen. Recently, Mizen has become one of the best friends of the channel out there. You've watched me promote their chef's knife, their stainless steel pan, and use those products in pretty much all my videos. And today, they're back once again to support the channel and to show off their incredible Dutch oven. As you know, Mizen offers premium kitchen tools sold at affordable prices. And this puppy is no exception, because the Mizen Dutch Oven offers a quality product without the outrageous price tag. This thing costs close to half as much as pricier Dutch ovens. Both in Mizen's testing and in my experience, this thing has shown incredible durability. You can use it countless times without it showing any wear and tear, and it's got a four-layer premium enamel coating, meaning that this thing is constructed with quality and accuracy and built to last a lifetime. With Mizen's 4.5, 5 millimeter cast iron core, you get a Dutch oven that is designed for even heating and great heat retention. And perhaps my favorite part of this guy are the lid options. As you can see, I chose the grill lid, which is super versatile and unique in and of itself, and I cannot wait to see what I can create with it. For this go around, I use it to create some incredible braised short ribs, and the ease of cooking and overall results with this could not have me any happier. So if you are interested in anything from Mizen's incredible lineup of products, click the link in the top line of the description and use code Seymour to get 20% off of your first Mizen order. And thanks so much to Mizen for sponsoring today's video. For the first time, I think ever, Gordon Ramsay, you sir are up first today. I grabbed some garlic powder and chicken wings, salt and pepper and hot sauce, unsalted butter, smoked paprika, and that's it. Incredibly simple, right off the bat, and Gordon, I love you, but what the hell is this recipe? I immediately had to look up what the term lollipopped chicken wings means. I don't think I have ever come into contact with this. Based on my research, it is simply the act of cutting around the thin portion and then shoving the meat up towards the end to make it look like a weird meat lollipop. I don't think this changes the way it eats or the texture. I think it's primarily just for show. Would I recommend anybody out there waste 20 minutes doing this regardless of how good these end up turning out? No, I don't. I also can't help myself, uh, I gotta mention this. I think it's so funny that when Gordon was doing the Hot Ones challenge, he mentioned this about the chicken wings. I mean, the wings are getting fucking smaller and smaller. Now they look like my fucking granddad's no fucking, uh, he's fucking big toe. How do you get a chicken wing that looks like my granddad's big toe? Meanwhile, look what he's dealing with. These things are even smaller and cut even stranger, so what the heck. But I just tried to get a nice even sear on these guys. I added in some knobs of butter and then expertly tossed them to evenly coat. And then they're gonna get baked at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes until they're cooked all the way through. I think I'm most interested today to see which cooking method ends up yielding the crispiest texture. While we are deep frying two of them and it'll probably end up being those, I am intrigued by this saute method as well as Chef John's baked baking powder method, but we'll get to all those eventually. To finish these guys, you just have to toss them in some of the juices from the pan, as well as some butter and your hot sauce of choice. And then expertly plate them by placing them upright for a wonderful presentation, or just say screw it and throw them all in there at once because they were not cooperating. They do smell awesome though, and they still look super appetizing. So let's give wing number one a try. These would have looked much cooler and more appetizing if I was able to get them to stand up. Um, I tried my best, but it just wasn't gonna happen. Mm. 
I really like these. I know I ragged on this recipe quite a bit just because a lot of the stuff was a little bit funny to me, but they are incredibly tender, basically falling off the bone. I love the uh, smokiness and the heat level of the hot sauce that I used. The outsides did not retain any crisp whatsoever from the searing. Um, not really surprising, but I actually don't mind it. The skin kind of just blends in with the meat. They basically become one. Have I changed my mind on the lollipopping technique as well? No, it's not worth it. Super delicious though. On a normal day, I'd be eating this entire bowl. Great place to start, but let's see what else we got coming up. Next on the agenda is a newcomer for the channel, the Halal Chef and his spicy buffalo chicken wings. You will need some wings and some sugar, flour and sunflower oil, white vinegar and celery salt, hot sauce and some chili powder, soy sauce, salt and pepper, paprika, butter, water, and fresh garlic. Immediately, we are making up for the lack of things happening in the last recipe. We've got a whole plethora of spices and seasonings here. The reason I even choose to include this recipe in the first place was because as I was watching it, I could not help but to just sit there salivating like a dog waiting for his dinner. Typically, in general, when somebody is seasoning up their flour, seasoning the wings before they even get coated, and loading on a homemade spice sauce at the very end, you're probably gonna end up with a titty... <sighs> And loading on a homemade sauce at the end, they probably know what they're doing and you're gonna end up with a pretty tasty product. The only mistake that I made that I feel obligated to mention is the fact that he says to use sunflower oil, something in my brain interpreted that as safflower oil. Do not try to ask me what a safflower is or what the difference between the two are, I have no clue. But they are two oils with a high smoke point, good for frying, so I'm sure it'll work out just fine. Once again, the biggest question here, are these wings gonna retain any crisp at all? I really don't know because while they do have an initial amazing crisp coming out of that oil with all the flour that was on there, we're gonna be dousing them in a sauce that is 50% water, so this should be a very interesting experiment to say the least. I got the wings all finished frying up in eight to 10 minute batches. I got my sauce reduced a little bit and looking delicious. All that's left to do now is to marry the two components, plate them up, and then see how we did. <coughs> Holy sh- I don't know if it's the chili powder or the hot sauce fumes, but something just went right up my nose. I wasn't expecting them to be that hot, but I'm a little scared now. What an interesting sauce is my first reaction. Obviously, it's got some good spice, but you get that like weird salivatory like gland reaction of the vinegar. Um, there's some weird tang happening. I don't know where that would be coming from. The flavor is the best part for sure. You'd be hard pressed to find a chicken wing with that complex of a flavor palette. Um, unfortunately, pretty much everything else is just average. Uh, the second that sauce hits the coating, it becomes super mushy. And because it was so thick, there's so much on there, there's a lot of just mushy falling coating. It was only about three or four minutes from when I tossed them in that coating to when I tasted them. So fortunately, the crispiness does not last very long. I say that and I just finished my second one. So it is possible I didn't fry them hard enough at like a high enough temperature to get that coating really firm but I have a feeling with the sauce and half of the sauce being just straight water, um, they're probably gonna get soggy either way. These first two recipes are pretty much neck and neck in my mind. They have about the same amount of pros and cons, but because I like to cook on that last one and I feel better about eating baked wings, uh, those are gonna stay in the lead for now. Third on today's agenda is Chef John from Food Wishes and his honey sriracha wings. I acquired some sesame oil and sriracha seasoned rice vinegar and salt, some chicken wings and pepper, honey, sesame seeds, baking powder, and smoked paprika. <laughs> Sounds like there's a damn frat party above me. Now, this could just be me being a little bit dramatic, as I have in the past, but I feel like there's a lot riding on this review of this recipe. For one, there's a handful of food YouTubers out there who I'm always a little bit timid to test their food and give an honest opinion, mostly because they're very loyal viewers, always find their way to my videos and let me have it if I have anything negative to say about them. I feel like Chef John falls into that category. He has a very loyal viewer base. And two, Chef John is like a food legend and this is one of his most popular recipes ever. The video's got three million views. So immediately, I can't help but to have pretty high expectations for this one. 
The wings are gonna get tossed in a dry mixture of salt, pepper, smoked paprika, and most notably, baking powder. Apparently, this is going to help yield an incredibly crispy wing, even though they are only going in the oven. And once they're evenly tossed, they get baked at 425 degrees for about 45 minutes, turning once in between and letting them go until they're super crispy and golden brown. I'm only realizing this now, but I might have gone into this with a sort of unconscious bias for the baked versions. I feel like I'm rooting for them a little harder because everybody already knows that you can get something super crispy and delicious by deep frying it. So I feel like the oven baked methods are kind of the underdogs today. But based on the fork test in Food Wishes video, as well as the way these are looking, I think they might deliver in that front. The expectations are hoping that I can say they were as quick as Gordon's while packing the same flavor punch as the Halal Chef. In reality, we shall see. Recipe number three and option number two that came out of the oven. I have high hopes for these. I've had plenty of oven baked wings that were super crisp, really good. And so far today, the front runner is baked as well, so. Mmm. These are absolutely phenomenal. I'm such a sucker for like a sweet and sticky and spicy glaze like this. They are cooked so well. When you have them up on the rack like that, they cook so evenly, they get evenly crisped all around, and it did retain more of that than the last ones, which is probably more a result of the sauces that we used. Um, I do have to mention, I went way too hard with that salt mixture. It's very salty. That baking powder mix that helped to make them crispy. I would say pull back a little bit on that. Um, I think I also just had less wings than he did. Easily though, the best all around wing so far, outside of the salt issue. It's got great flavor, they're cooked perfect, they're still juicy, and they're the only ones to retain a little bit of crisp. It'll be a tall task for sure to beat these, but contestant number four, let's see what you got. Lastly, but certainly not least today, we've got Rie and her famous Japanese tebasaki chicken wings. To make them, you will have to grab some sake and vegetable oil, some potato starch and sugar, Mirin, low sodium soy sauce, salt and pepper, whole chicken wings, some sesame seeds, and fresh garlic. Although quite a bit of time has passed since I last made and consumed these, I will never forget how damn good these are. I don't remember if I put them in my top recipes for that 100 episode special, but if I ever did another episode like that where I recapped all my favorite recipes, this one would have to be in it. Which is why, for full transparency, this was the favorite in my mind going in. It gets so crispy with the potato starch, the way it's double deep fried, first at a lower temperature, and then you crank that heat to make sure you get a really crispy exterior. And then you just have a really simple sauce, a reduction of the soy, mirin, and sake, lots of sugar and garlic. It is so simple, so tasty. I know a lot of people don't love to deep fry in their kitchens, and that's all right. But if you ever do muster up the courage one day to deep fry something in your kitchen, you should probably try this. With all that being said, it is very possible that the last recipe could hang on to the top spot. Those were incredible. And while I do get pretty crispy, I feel like the potato starch and the double dipping frying technique might cause it to retain a little bit more oil than I would like. Either way, these bad boys are done and looking delicious. Make sure to get them nice and coated in that glaze. Load on your sesame seeds. I wish I also had some green onions because that would really do it up. But for the last time today, let's give this recipe a shot. Not really sure what I was going for with the plating here. <laughs> it looks like a weird uh, crab. It's like dripping motor oil, <laughs> but it look, could look worse, I guess. Mm. Oh my God. Look at this crispy, perfectly cooked, juicy thing and try to tell me you don't want to take a bite of it right now. I think I forgot just how good these were. These have to be top 12 to 15 recipes we've ever made on the channel. They are so salty and sweet. You get the garlic, the sake and the mirin add such like depth and delicious complexity. These are unbelievable. I will say, one of the times I made them in the past, I used normal full sodium soy sauce and they leaned a little bit too salty. I think I might have reduced the sauce a little bit too much. So either watch how much you reduce it or just use low sodium soy like I did and they will turn out amazing. I love the shape of them, the fact that we keep them whole. You don't have to decide between which piece you want. You know, if there's only a couple flats left and you feel bad about taking the last one, 
Unless you guys aren't weird overthinkers about that kind of stuff like me. Absolutely, undoubtedly the winner of today. These things are incredible. I cannot recommend that you make them enough. Even if you don't want to deep fry something, make that damn glaze and put it on whatever because it is to die for. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave me a big old like. It helps out the channel a lot. Let me know which recipe or which food items you'd like to see next in the next Giant Versus episode. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. That they could have seen the fire out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we cooking up that rah rah, yeah, yeah. Now we eating all the fries out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we living super size, ah, yeah.